Like many scientists in my generation, I had dreamed of going into space, but then after watching Jacques Cousteau for so many Sunday nights on TV, I really wanted to dive. I wanted to go in the other direction. So my first dive on album, which it just blew my mind because I had always wanted to, to do any type of submersible dive. Right before I took my dive, one of my colleagues said to me, you know, you're gonna be the first African-American woman to dive in Alvin. This is gonna be a pretty big deal. And I thought, it shouldn't be such a big deal. We want to get a much broader cross-section of people in the sciences to have these really special experiences. When you're in Alvin and you slowly descend, it's just a beautiful, calm, amazing feeling. There is this period where you descend from where you can see in the ocean, which we call the euphotic zone, so it's beautiful blue, but then it starts to get gray, and then it, it goes pitch black. So it's like you are in space. We started to see these flashes of light in the water, in the darkness, and they were bioluminescent bluish green siphonophores or, or worms that were bumping into each other and twirling around, and it was like a fireworks show right outside of our, our windows. Finally, after a couple of hours, we got to a depth of around 2,500 meters, so that's about a mile and a half. When the pilot first turned on the lights, he said, we've landed, we've touched down onto the seafloor. Just mind-blowing, because there it was. There was this very strange, alien, a volcanic seascape. Everything was completely still. Certainly you can cover a lot more of the seafloor and the water column with these other types of robots that are autonomous, but there's still something about being there, about the perspective and the awareness and even the sense of scale. The tube worms that we saw were three to four feet long. The clams that are at these hydrothermal systems are the sizes of dinner plates. Pretty much everything that we know about uh, these underwater hot springs because of submersibles like Alvin, you move along the seafloor from target to target. For me, it was looking at the, the shapes of the lava flows because my emphasis was looking at the distribution of cracks on the seafloor or fissures, and then of course, making all the observations that we could in terms of the hydrothermal vents until it's time to slowly rise up to, to the surface. Uh, we were so tired that we basically slept on the way back up. <laughs> and then you're brought back on board and it was just a really amazing, exhilarating experience. And there's nothing like the first Alvin dive. The other ones were thrilling but as it is in life with first things, that first one, there was nothing like it.